Hey dear, welcome back to the world of cross-dressing stories. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now, let's dive into the story. As I, Billy, stood in the back room of our family's bustling wedding car hire shop, I could feel the excitement and stress mingling in the air. It was late spring, the peak of wedding season, and our family business was preparing for a major promotional photo shoot designed to showcase our newest addition. A vintage Rolls Royce, perfect for that dream wedding exit. My parents had poured their hearts into this business, and I'd always admired how their faces lit up with pride when they talked about helping couples make their big day special. That particular morning, the shop was a hive of activity. My mom was on the phone, coordinating last minute details with vendors, her voice a calm yet firm presence amidst the chaos. My dad was outside meticulously polishing the cars, ensuring each one gleamed under the soft morning sun. And there I was, supposed to be updating the bookings database, but instead, I couldn't help but be drawn to the excitement outside my window. However, the vibrant buzz was abruptly pierced by a phone call that seemed to suck the energy right out of the room. It was the modeling agency. The model, who was supposed to wear the stunning wedding dress for the shoot, had an emergency and couldn't make it. I watched as my mother's face fell, her worry lines deepening. She tried to hide her panic, but her voice had that slight tremble which told me she was far from calm. We can't reschedule, everything's been set up and it's too late to find a replacement who fits the dress, she murmured to my dad after she hung up. They both looked so defeated, standing there amidst the beautiful chaos they had created, now facing the possibility of it all going to waste. I felt a strange mix of frustration and helplessness watching them. Here were the two people who had tackled every obstacle to build something of their own, now stumped by something as unpredictable as human availability. Little did I know, this hiccup was about to spin my ordinary high school life into a direction I never imagined. As the tension thickened, I couldn't just stand by. I wanted to help, to do something to lift the burden off their shoulders. But what could I, a 17-year-old guy more familiar with computer screens than haute couture, possibly do to solve this? Little did I realize the solution was hanging right there in our shop, woven into the fabric of the very problem we faced. As I lingered in the room, contemplating how to ease the sudden tension, my mom continued fussing over the elegant wedding dress laid out on her workspace. With measuring tape in hand, she meticulously adjusted the hem, her brow furrowed in concentration. The dress was a masterpiece of lace and silk, meant to highlight the vintage elegance of our wedding cars in the upcoming photo shoot. Every detail needed to be perfect. Breaking from her concentration, she glanced over at me and back at the dress. A peculiar gleam sparked in her eyes, a mix of a wild idea and sheer desperation. Billy, she started hesitantly, measuring tape still in hand. You know, you and the model have almost the same measurements. I paused, unsure if I'd heard her correctly over the hum of the sewing machine. Mom, what are you saying? I asked, half chuckling, unsure whether to take her seriously. Well, she continued, a slight smile playing at her lips, as if she herself couldn't believe what she was about to propose. What if you stepped in for the shoot? Just until we find a replacement. You're practically a perfect fit, and it would only be for the photos. I stared at her, mouth agape, the absurdity of the idea washing over me. Me, in a wedding dress? The thought was ludicrous, comical even. But as I looked into her eyes, I saw not just a wild proposal, but a mother grappling with the potential fallout of a failed business opportunity. Come on, Billy, it would really help out the family. Plus, it might even be... Fun, she added, her voice tinged with hope and a playful bribe. And I might throw in that new graphics card you've been eyeing for your PC. The mention of the graphics card made my heart skip. I had been saving up for months, inching closer to enhancing my gaming setup. I weighed the options in my mind, the ridiculous against the rewarding. Finally, with a heavy sigh masked by a reluctant grin, I nodded. Okay, Mom, if it's just for the photos and nobody else knows about it. Her relief was palpable. She rushed over, throwing her arms around me in a tight embrace that smelled of fabric softener and her floral perfume. Oh, thank you, Billy. You won't regret this, and we'll keep it just between us for now. As she went back to adjusting the dress to suit me better, 
A mix of emotions churned inside me. There was a strange thrill in the secrecy of it, a bizarre adventure in what was otherwise a mundane life. Yet, there was also a creeping anxiety about stepping so far out of my comfort zone, about the fabric and feel of a world so unfamiliar. This was no ordinary day at the shop. It was the beginning of something entirely new, a step into the unknown, dressed in silk and lace. The transformation began in the quiet sanctuary of our back room, transformed for the day into a makeshift dressing room. The sunlight filtering through the blinds cast long, soft beams across the floor, illuminating the dress and the array of garments my mother had laid out for me. There was an unsettling calm as I stood there, watching her prepare the ensemble that I was soon to wear. Okay, Billy, let's start with the basics, my mom said, her voice a gentle nudge back to reality. She handed me the undergarments, control panties, and a full slip, which felt oddly delicate and foreign in my hands. I hesitated, my heart pounding, not just from the novelty, but also from the surrealism of the moment. Seeing my hesitation, my mom smiled reassuringly. It's just like wearing any costume for a play, Billy. It's all part of the role. Taking a deep breath, I stepped behind a folding screen to change. Slipping into the control panties, I felt an immediate shift, both in my posture and my self-awareness. The fabric was smooth and snug, compressing yet oddly comforting. Next came the slip, which fell softly against my skin, a whisper of silk that contrasted sharply with the roughness of my usual jeans and t-shirts. Each piece was a layer not just of fabric but of curiosity, wrapping me in a world so different from my own. When I stepped out from behind the screen, my mom's eyes widened slightly, a mix of surprise and something akin to pride flickering through her expression. You look different already, she remarked, her hands deftly moving to adjust the slip, ensuring it sat just right. Next were the hosiery and heels. The stockings were a challenge, delicate and fine. They were unlike anything I'd ever handled. My mom showed me how to roll them up my legs carefully, teaching me to avoid snags with the patience of someone who had done this a thousand times. As the stockings set into place, reaching high on my thighs, I was struck by the sheen they left on my legs, transforming them into something almost sculptural. Heels next, my mom announced, presenting a pair of modest three-inch heels. The thought of walking in them was daunting, but the moment I slipped them on, my entire posture changed. I was taller, forced onto the balls of my feet, a precarious elevation that required a surprising amount of balance. Standing back up, I caught my reflection in a full-length mirror. The transformation was startling. The undergarments and stockings had sculpted a version of myself I didn't recognize, and the heels lent a gracefulness to my stance, a forced elegance that felt both unnatural and intriguing. My mom stood beside me, her work almost complete. Just a few more adjustments, she murmured, her fingers expertly tweaking the fit of the dress as she zipped it up. The fabric hugged my altered silhouette, and suddenly I wasn't just Billy in a dress. I was someone entirely different, a character in a play where the lines between boy and bride blurred. As she stepped back to examine her work, her eyes met mine in the mirror. Look at you, she whispered, her voice thick with unspoken emotions. Just look at you. I did look. The boy who loved video games and dreaded school dances was gone replaced by this figure who bore an elegance that was both foreign and fascinating. In that moment, a curious blend of fear and fascination twirled within me, twining like the lace on my dress. What began as a simple act of wearing a dress had evolved into something deeper, a questioning of norms and an exploration of self wrapped in silk and satin. The room was quiet, save for the soft rustle of fabric as I moved, Standing before the mirror after the initial fittings, I took a moment to really see myself in the full array of wedding attire. The dress, with its intricate lace and flowing train, transformed me into a figure from a bridal magazine. As I adjusted the skirt and shifted my weight, the heels clicked softly against the wooden floor, a constant reminder of their unfamiliar presence. It was during these adjustments, feeling the snug embrace of the dress, and the gentle tug of the heels with each step that a revelation began to unfold within me. Each movement was a delicate dance, each breath a negotiation with the constricting yet beautifully sculpted silhouette the dress provided. I felt an unexpected wave of empathy wash over me. 
For the first time, I truly understood the pressures and challenges women often faced, maneuvering through both physical constraints and societal expectations, all while maintaining poise and grace. This empathy deepened as I practiced walking back and forth in the room, my mom offering gentle corrections and encouragement. Keep your back straight, shoulders back, but relax, she instructed, her hands guiding my posture. With each step, the heels dictated a gracefulness that required a precise balance of effort and surrender. I realized how each piece of clothing, each accessory women wore, wasn't just a matter of fashion, but a complex interplay of identity. Functionality and expression. During one of these practice walks, my mom received a phone call. Her face fell as she listened, her hand covering the mouthpiece briefly as she whispered, it's the agency. Candace, the model, she's definitely out. No chance of her making it back in time. The finality in her voice marked the urgency of our predicament. I stopped mid-step, considering the weight of this news. The room felt smaller suddenly, the stakes higher. Yet, amidst this tightening scenario, a spark of something new flickered within me. An unexpected sense of challenge. A drive that spurred from my newfound empathy and understanding. I turned to my mom, who was still holding the phone in her hand, a look of worry etching her features. Mom, I can keep doing this, I said, my voice steadier than I felt. I mean, I want to continue, not just for the photo shoot, but for the whole campaign if you need me to. Her eyes widened in surprise, mirroring my own internal surprise at my words. My involvement had begun as a reluctant favor, a way to simply aid in a logistical bind. But now, standing in heels and lace, it had transformed into a personal challenge, a quest not just to help my family, but to explore this new aspect of myself that empathized so deeply with experiences so different from my own. Are you sure, Billy? She asked, putting the phone down, her expression a mix of maternal concern and cautious relief. This could mean more fittings, more walking in heels, more time as this. I nodded, feeling a resolve building within me. I'm sure, Mom. Let's do it. It's important to you and Dad, and I think it's becoming important to me too, in a way I didn't expect. A smile broke across her face, the tension easing from her shoulders. Thank you, Billy. Really, thank you. As she moved forward to adjust a strand of hair that had fallen across the dress, I felt a solidification of my role, not just in the photo shoot, but in a broader dialogue about appearances, expectations, and identities. What had started as a simple act of son helping mother had evolved into a profound journey of self-discovery and empathy, one step at a time. The morning of the photo shoot dawned bright and clear, the sun casting a warm, golden glow that seemed almost auspicious. Today, I wasn't just Billy. I was stepping fully into the persona of Susan, a character created out of necessity, but embraced with a growing sense of purpose. The transformation required more than just slipping into a dress. It demanded a full immersion into an identity crafted from the ground up. My mother was my guide through this metamorphosis. With a practiced hand and an artist's eye, she outfitted me from the foundation garments upwards, ensuring each piece contributed to the flawless silhouette of a bride. The control garments sculpted my physique, smoothing and shaping under the weight of the luxurious wedding gown. Next came the stockings, their silky sheen encasing my legs in elegance, followed by the careful selection of shoes that added grace and a delicate challenge with every step. The real transformation, however, began with the makeup and hairstyling. My mom worked quietly, but with an intensity that filled the room. She applied foundation that matched my skin tone perfectly, concealing, enhancing, and transforming my face into a canvas of subtle beauty. Eyeshadow, mascara, and eyeliner followed, each stroke adding depth and expression. When she finished with the lipstick, a perfect shade of soft pink, I hardly recognized the person staring back at me in the mirror. Finally, she styled my hair, or rather the wig we had chosen, into elegant curls that framed my face beautifully. As I stood up, fully dressed and made up as Susan, a mix of emotions churned inside me. There was a thrill in the transformation an exhilaration in the artistry we had achieved together. But beneath that, there was a tremor of doubt, a whisper questioning my ability to inhabit this role convincingly. Arriving at the venue, the real test began. The setting was picturesque, a lush garden with flowers in full bloom, creating a perfect backdrop for a wedding-themed photo shoot. 
As I stepped out, the soft rustle of my gown and the click of heels on the stone pathway announced Susan to the world. The first interactions were with the photography team and other staff members who were briefed only about Susan, not about Billy. Their greetings were warm and accepting, their compliments on my appearance genuine and flattering. You look stunning, Susan, one of the assistants said, a statement that boosted my confidence, yet felt surreal to hear. Throughout the shoot, I posed and moved as directed, each flash of the camera capturing not just the image of a bride, but also a performance that felt increasingly natural. Between shots, casual chats with the crew, and lighthearted exchanges added layers to my role, each interaction a thread woven into the fabric of Susan's temporary existence. I found myself responding with smiles and nods, my voice softer, my movements more measured and graceful. Yet, with each compliment and each successful pose, my self-doubt whispered back. Was I convincing enough? Could they see through the facade? These questions fluttered in my mind, but the positive reactions from everyone involved seemed to silence them, reinforcing my confidence in the role I had taken on. As the day progressed, the initial anxiety gave way to a sense of pride and accomplishment. I was not just filling in. I was bringing Susan to life, contributing something uniquely mine to a family endeavor that meant so much to us all. The shoot became more than just a business necessity. It was a celebration of identity, creativity, and the unexpected paths we sometimes find ourselves on. The exhilaration of stepping out of my comfort zone mixed with moments of self-doubt, creating a complex but profoundly rewarding experience that I would not soon forget. The photo shoot was drawing to a close, bathed in the golden light of the late afternoon sun. The garden, with its blooms and meticulously arranged settings, had witnessed hours of work, capturing moments of crafted beauty. As Susan, I had navigated the day with a growing ease, each flash of the camera solidifying my confidence in this unexpected role. The praise and interaction had buoyed me, creating a bubble of surreal reality that I both inhabited and observed from a distance. Then came the climactic twist that would redefine the day. As we set up for a group shot, a young man, introduced as Mark, joined the scene. He was part of the promotional narrative, playing the role of the groom. Tall, with a charming smile, he approached me with the easy confidence of someone accustomed to these enactments. You look absolutely beautiful, Susan, he said, taking my arm as we posed in front of the vintage Rolls Royce. His touch was light, respectful, yet it sent a ripple of mixed emotions through me. For a moment, I was caught off guard. His words, meant to be part of the script, felt oddly personal, blurring the lines of my performance. I thanked him, my voice steady, but inside, a storm of thoughts whirled. How strange and enlightening it was to be on the receiving end of such a gesture and compliment, typically reserved for brides. It was a playful, scripted moment, yet it illuminated the often unspoken rules and expectations of gender roles that society held. After the shoot, as I changed back into my regular clothes, the weight of the dress and the day's persona fell away, but the impact of those moments lingered. The drive home was quiet, reflective. I found myself grappling with a mix of relief and a strange nostalgia for the freedom I had felt playing Susan. The constraints of the attire and the role had been real, but so had been the liberation from my everyday self. Once home, I found my mother in the kitchen, her expression a mix of fatigue and satisfaction from the day's success. I joined her, hesitating as I searched for the words to express the jumble of feelings inside me. Mom, I began, my voice faltering a bit. Today was more than I expected. She turned from the stove, her attention fully on me. Tell me about it, she said softly, encouraging me to open up. It was liberating, in a way I didn't anticipate, I confessed. Dressing as Susan, being seen like that, it made me question a lot about what we expect from men and women, about how we're supposed to act or feel or dress. I paused, gathering my thoughts. It's odd, but wearing a dress, being complimented like that, it felt constraining, but also strangely freeing. My mother nodded, understanding dawning in her eyes. It's about the roles we're given, isn't it? Sometimes stepping into someone else's shoes or their dress can show us which parts of our lives feel like they don't fit. Yes, exactly, I agreed, feeling a weight lift as the words came out. It's like I've always just accepted things as they are. But today, playing a role, 
it made me see the boundaries more clearly and question why they're there at all. She came over, putting an arm around my shoulders. I'm proud of you, Billy, not just for helping out today, but for embracing the experience, for letting it teach you something about yourself and the world. We stood there in the kitchen, the day's revelations settling around us like dust after a storm. What had started as a reluctant favor had evolved into a profound journey of self-discovery. It had challenged my views on gender, identity, and expression, opening up a dialogue with my mother that would continue to shape how I viewed myself and others. As the conversation flowed, I realized that this experience had changed me in subtle but indelible ways. My exploration into the persona of Susan had not only contributed to our family's business, but had also opened a door to deeper self-awareness and empathy. Gifts that, like the best of garments, were tailored to fit and meant to be worn proudly. The days following the photo shoot felt different. There was a lingering sense of transformation that refused to fade as the layers of Susan's attire had. Instead, it had seeded something within me, a deep, stirring need to articulate and explore the revelations and emotions that had surfaced. This urge found its outlet in the creation of a blog, Walking in These Shoes. With each entry, I poured out my thoughts, experiences, and reflections from my brief journey into the world of cross-dressing. It started as a personal project, a way to make sense of the complexities of gender norms and the dual feelings of confinement and liberation I had experienced. I wrote about the pressure of societal expectations the freedom found in challenging these norms, and the beautiful, sometimes painful, always profound dance of identity and expression. As I shared my stories, something unexpected happened. The blog began to resonate with a wider audience, people from various backgrounds, each grappling with their own constraints and explorations of identity, connected with my words. Comments poured in, sharing stories of personal journeys, struggles with acceptance, and celebrations of self-expression. Your story is an inspiration, wrote one reader. It's comforting to know someone else out there understands the tightrope walk between who society wants us to be and who we feel we are inside. Another commented, Thank you for being so open and honest. It's helped me have the courage to express myself in ways I was scared to before. As the blog grew, so did my role as an advocate for gender fluidity and fashion freedom. Interviews, podcasts, and even panel discussions at conferences followed. Each platform offered a new stage to advocate for a more inclusive understanding of gender expression, highlighting how fashion can be both a tool for conformity and a powerful medium for personal liberation. Through this unexpected journey, my life took on new colors and contours. What began as a reluctant favor to help my family's business had unfolded into a powerful exploration of self and society. I found strength in vulnerability, power in empathy, and purpose in advocacy. My experiences as Susan, though brief, had opened my eyes to the myriad ways we define and express ourselves and the profound impact of embracing diversity in all its forms. The blog, Walking in These Shoes, became more than just a collection of reflections. It was a beacon for those navigating their paths through the complexities of identity. It was a testament to the idea that sometimes the most enlightening journeys are the ones we never plan to take. In the end, my accidental foray into the world of cross-dressing did more than just challenge societal norms. It broke down barriers within myself, allowing me to embrace and advocate for a world where everyone has the freedom to express who they are without constraint or fear. This journey with all its surprises and challenges had not only revealed new strengths, but had also opened up avenues for personal growth and advocacy, bridging my initial reluctance with a newfound embrace of diverse expressions of identity. It was a clear reminder that sometimes the most profound changes come from the most unexpected experiences.